I've talked to a lot of young people lately, maybe 20 and 30 year olds, about the Whole Earth Catalog, which actually came out about 50 years ago, and they don't really know what it was. And it was such an important thing that I thought I would drag out my old catalog and uh, describe it a little bit to you. In um, Steve Jobs, in a, um, a commencement address at Stanford in 2005, said this about the Whole Earth Catalog. When I was young, there was an amazing publication called the Whole Earth Catalog, which was one of the Bibles of my generation. It was created by a fellow named Stuart Brand, not far from here in Menlo Park, and he brought it to life with his poetic touch. It was sort of like Google in paperback form, 36 years before Google came along. Um, I was in 1966 and 67 living in Big Sur and building geodesic domes, and I started getting letters from people in different parts of the country asking for the mathematics for domes. And I realized that I was writing essentially the same letter over and over again. And I thought, well, I should maybe just mimeograph up something um, to send out to people. And then I thought, well, while I'm at it, there are other things that I have, uh, other things I've been excited about in recent years that I've learned about, like organic farming, um, uh, ecological awareness, political activism, uh, the I Ching, astronomy, meditation, uh, music, the Bob Dylan, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles. Anyway, all these things were revolving around in the uh, counterculture, and um, it, it occurred to me that uh, I could put them all together and put them in some kind of a booklet and, and publish something. Uh, in um, 1967, I guess it was, a friend of mine gave me this book here, The Dome Cookbook by Steve Bear. It cost one dollar. And it was a story of building, um, it was a story of building domes in uh, New Mexico out of chopped out car tops at Drop City. Um, and so Steve had put together this book. And when I looked at this book, it was just done on a typewriter with handwriting. Uh, he'd just drawn crude, um, graphics in it. Here's, here's the basic solids. He'd written sideways. In some cases what he had done, and here you can see what he did here, and in some cases when he made a mistake he would just cross it out and he left it, he left it that way and I thought I could do a book like that. And so that was the first inkling I had that maybe I could do a book. Um, maybe six months later um, I met Stuart Brand and I realized that Stuart was much farther along in getting all this information together. And, um, and so uh, Stuart came out with the Whole Earth Catalog in 1968. It cost $5. It was 64 pages. It was done on a newspaper press. And it, it uh, uh, combined uh, many of the things that um, everybody was interested in back in the 60s. So here's some of the pages. Um, uh, here's, um, uh, here's making books. Um, here's um, direct use of the sun's energy. Um, here's on growth and form, which was on um, the, the structure in nature. Um, here was the Dymaxion world of Buckminster Fuller. We were all very interested in Bucky Fuller's ideas on cars and domes, space structures. Um, Here's uh, catalogs. Here's the Heathkit catalog, which uh, included uh, building your own computers. Here was a book, Intelligent Life in the Universe. I mean, building computers. This was almost 50 years ago. Here was the uh, medical manual. Here was land for sale. Back then, I was everybody was looking for land. The Strout catalog and the United Farm catalog. And they would show pictures, and there would be these great looking, here's a waterfront. Uh, one acre, twenty-three thousand dollars in like Tennessee. Here was the LL Bean catalog, which was important to Stewart. It, we gave him kind of the the original idea to do this catalog, and LL Bean catalog was rain boots and all kinds of things, uh, insulated uh, uh, pants, uh, clothing that you could get via mail order. Here's a recreational equipment catalog, REI back you know back then, which was in Berkeley. I think it actually started in Seattle. Um, one of the things that um, Stuart did 
was he had very accurate uh, access information. So here's um, here's a book on hot springs. Here's a book. Here's a book about, by uh, Richard Brodigan on trout fishing in America. So he, he had the title, the author, the date of publication, the number of pages, the cost, a dollar ninety-five, and where you could get it from City Lights Books. And so each one of these items in here had very ac very accurate access information. Here was um, a book on science experiments for everyone. Here was the Edmund Scientific Catalog, which I loved. Um, it had model making kits for domes. It had the radiolaria, little little uh, vacuum sealed globe that you put in the sun that spun around. So this this came out and it just it just struck everybody as the most wonderful thing. Uh, 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 everybody loved this. Uh, he concluded by saying, "We can't put it together. It is together." And what this is here, this is the first view of the Earth from space. That was the big deal about the whole Earth catalog. It was the first time we saw the Earth from space where we saw this shimmering blue planet and got the idea of how fragile it was. We did a, a, um, a, a, uh, a quarterly publication called the Difficult but Possible Supplement to the Whole Earth Catalog. And then came the Whole Earth Epilogue, and then came the next Whole Earth Catalog, and the last Whole Earth Catalog, and pretty soon they had sold over three million copies. But anyway, here's this is um, you've been looking at a very rare copy of the this almost 50 year old book. And Stuart Brand doesn't even have one of these things. So that's what it was, and I recommend that you look it up on Wikipedia. And just as a very important thing that. Um, uh, was a very was the, was at the heart of the counterculture and the the countercultural revolution of the 60s